Hey everybody and welcome to the Daily Mastermind. I'm Paul Baxter, Implementation Coach for the Mortgage Mastermind Group. And we are going to be talking about conversion pages and, and getting people to take action on your conversion pages. You know, we've you've heard them called landing pages, squeeze pages, web forms. You can call them whatever you, the heck you want to call them. The reality is, is they're conversion pages. That's what they're intended to do. That's what the whole purpose behind it is. That's why you're doing them in the first place is to create conversions, turn people that are targets of yours into actual lead opportunities. And so that's what we're going to cover uh, today and tomorrow is we're going to talk, go deep into this and, and talk about it in depth. So the first rule to understand when, as it relates to conversion pages is that 93% of your website's visitors will not take action on the first visit. Again, let me repeat that. 93% of website visitors will not take action on the first visit. 7% of people take action on a website on a first visit. 7%. And so it's important to know that going in. It's important to have that in the back of your mind. This holds true even if you have the most amazing offer ever heard of in the mortgage industry only 7% of people are going to take action on that initial visit. So the first click is the start. And if you remember our classes that we did uh, over the last few weeks on branding, that first start, you've got to, to deliver your brand, to deliver that brand and create brand trust, you've got to deliver a good first impression, you've got to have a good initial conversation, and you've got to have good follow-up. And that holds true for your conversion pages as well. To get your target to convert, you must get them to believe in your brand promise. You've got to create that trust that we've talked about um, on this class. And so those are the things that we're going to focus on is that first impression as it relates to a conversion page, the initial conversation as it relates to a conversion page, and the follow-up. That's the biggie. That's where you actually convert them. And so if you go into creating your conversion page with this in mind, you're, you're going to be more likely to, to be effective in your message. You're, you're going to deliver it better if you go into the, to it with that in mind. And if you guys remember, we actually covered this in more of a condensed kind of an overview when we talked about the three-step funnel. We talked about uh, we we kind of focused on it in a consumer direct sort of fashion, and that's you know we're kind of bringing that full phase, we're bringing that back and focusing on that again. But the three step funnel covers this in a condensed view. But we're going to take a detailed look at it this week and make your Facebook ads actually convert, and and we're going to take each step and what you should be doing and exactly how to do the step by step for each piece of the puzzle and getting those steps set up. So again, if you need to revert back, in some of the class today, we are going to talk about reverting back to the three-step funnel. Just remember the way that is. That's in the Daily Mastermind Archive in the Members section. In the Daily Mastermind Archive, it's like early on when we first started doing this, it was the three-step funnel. And again, it was focused more on a consumer direct approach, but you can kind of use it for, for any method. And, and I'm a big fan of using conversion pages to get people to your presentation. So we'll cover that in depth that this week as well. So knowing that my target is more likely than not, they're, they're probably not going to convert the first time they visit my web page. So what that means is I need to lead them down a path. And the path incorporates those three specific pieces, that first impression. Why would they want to click your ad in the first place? What's in it for them? The initial conversation, what they get the very first time they visit your web page. That's your, when you're talking about it or relating it to a conversion page. You're talking about that first conversation is what, what do they get when they land or when they click your website? When they liked your first impression, you know, they, they found something in it for them and they clicked it. What's that initial conversation like? What happens when they click the ad? That's your initial conversation. And then the follow up. What, what, what do you do to get them to come back to your website? Remember, 93% of people aren't going to convert. And just so you know, the statistic is, 
that it's 88% of people make a buying decision or convert on a third visit or with a third opportunity. So getting the, the goal is to get them to come back three times or more than once at least because Again, we're looking to convert them, and more. we've got a 93% chance that they're not going to convert on that first try, so we've got to have a good follow-up. What do we do to get them to come back to our website? How do we bring them back? Right? And so that first impression, the first impression, you need to create an ad in Facebook that gets the attention of your target. And so when we're talking about a conversion page, that first impression, what gets them to notice it? What catches their attention and gets them to want to click it? And I believe that focusing on the niches within our business is the single best way to get people to take those actions. <laughs> and there's lots of niches in our business. You've got reverse mortgages. You've got VA loans. If you're in a rural area, you've got USDA loans. You've got your renovation programs and products that are available through FHA 203K now. You've got your doctor specialty loans. You've got your first-time home buyer niches. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> Quite frankly, there are a lot of things that you can market in terms of a niche. But to be effective, you've got to have a true target. And to truly have a target, you've got to have a specific program or product to offer and that's, that's really how you narrow it down. So focus on the niches when you think about creating your ad in Facebook that gets attention of your actual target. Create a post on your business page with the benefits you're offering. So learn the truth about reverse mortgages. Uh, welcome home veterans, zero money down home buying opportunities just for you. Buying a home with renovation in mind is easier than you may think. Get all the information here. Everything you should know as a first-time home buyer. Get the top ten questions answered right here. So again, you're, you're focusing. You're making a post on your business page that focuses on that niche that delivers the, the benefits as opposed to delivering the features. So my post... Um, just to give you guys an example of what it would look like, my post on Paul's agent training say, say, station, reverse mortgage myth buster. I am sure you have heard all the rumors and seen all the TV ads with the fawns. The fact is the truth about reverse mortgage is out there and can be, I missed the word, can be the right fit financially for some. Find out the true answers to the 10 most frequently asked questions at, and you put the link to your, your initial conversation page. So I've just, I stole a page from our good friend Jeff Kirkpatrick, and I put in the Kosher reverse mortgage page, you know, because it's a reverse mortgage type of advertisement. So you would put your initial conversation page or the link to where your initial conversation page is. And we're going to talk about that in just a second here. Don't you worry. But I, again, I just made a post on my page that talks about the benefits. Why would a senior, why would somebody that would, that would be interested, why would the, the targets that I'm looking for be interested in clicking this ad? Reverse mortgage myth buster. I'm sure you've heard all the rumors and seen all the TV ads with the funds. The fact is the truth about reverse mortgage is out there and can be the right fit financially for some. Find out the true answer to the 10 most frequently asked questions at thekosherreversemortgage.com. Now what I would need to do is catch their eye with the ad. And so the next step is to make an image using PowerPoint that supports the post. Now there's a caveat with this, and this is very important that you guys understand this. Very important that you hear this. With an image, if you're going to do an advertisement on a post, there, the image cannot contain 45%, let me rephrase that, 45% of the image must be image, uh, you can't have verbiage be more than 45% of the image, that's the way to say it. You cannot have verbiage be more than 45% of the image. So I've got a nice big border with my verbiage in the center of that. My hope is, is that that's less than 45% of the image. Uh, I can't remember the name of the tool now, and I, and I just am, am remembering that I've heard of this tool. 
there is a tool available on the internet for free that you can check your images and, and make sure that they fit within the guidelines. But the guideline is, is that the verbiage can't be 45% of the image. So when you're creating one, you know, use something that's going to stand out. Put your Use some verbiage if you'd like to, but make sure that it is not 45% of the image when doing that. So I just created this in PowerPoint little, you know, <coughs> I'm in a coastal area, so water stands out to everybody here. And reverse mortgage MythBuster. Notice I spelled it incorrectly on purpose. I didn't do it like the MythBusters on TV. Don't want to infringe on anybody's copyright stuff. So my MythBuster, I'm just using a combination of words. They're spelled differently. Um, I've got a space in between, so I'm spelling it incorrectly according to the dictionary um, to avoid that. And that's my image. And so I put an image to go with my post. I don't make the post by itself. Notice I didn't post yet. I made an image and put an image with my post. And the reason is, is that Facebook says that posts with images get 120% more engagement than those without or those with links only. And the reality is, is you want people to click the ad and then you want them to benefit, you know, you want them to, to get a benefit or click the, the link to, to receive the benefit that you're offering. That's the goal of it. And so you've got to increase those odds by doing the things that Facebook wants you to do or Facebook says we'll increase those odds for you. Now don't worry, we can still do an ad to that post that is very robust, that gives an opportunity for us to target our true audience and really be specific on the audience that we're targeting with the post. And so again, you make a post on your page about the benefits, what's in it for them, get them to want to go to your page, support it with a cool image, but be careful that your image does not have, that the verbiage is not 45% or more of the image itself. So then the next step is to create an ad for your post to a targeted audience. You can do that through Ads Manager or Power Editor, whichever you feel comfortable with. Again, there's not as many the, – the benefits in Power Editor don't – aren't as great as they used to be four or five months ago. And so it's not as important to go through Power Editor. We've got every bit the demographic power that, that, that is inside of Power Editor through the Ads Manager. So I go to Ads Manager. In either case, you're going to click Create an Ad. I'm going to choose to boost your post. Again, I made a post on my page, and that's the type of ad that we're going to run is to boost your posts. When you click on that, what it's going to ask you to do is to choose the page that you want to boost the posts for and then select the post that you, that you want to boost. By default, the last post you made is the first one in the option. Now, if it's later on or a post you made a few days ago that you want to do the ad for, you simply drop down the little menu here and that will give you all the posts on the page. Now, one thing I did find out after I was making this slide, I kind of clicked on it because I never noticed it before. Does anybody see this little plus symbol right here? This is a little on the side for today's class. What this little plus symbol does is if you remember in Power Editor the other day, we talked about the ability within that section to be able to create a page post right from inside of there instead of having to go to the page first, make the post then go into Power Editor and advertise that post. Well, this little plus symbol right here does the same thing. If you click on it, you've selected the page. If you click on it, it says Create New Page Post. So you can actually do that from within inside the Create Ad now as well. So that's also an additional feature of the Ads Manager that you no longer have to go to Power Editor to be able to use. Okay, so boost your posts. Select the page you're going to boost the post for and make sure that that's the right post that you want to boost and then simply select continue. The next step is to name the campaign. Now remember, a campaign is where all your tracking, that's where all the stuff is. The ad set and the ad are a little bit different. So you do want to make, both, name both your campaign and your ad set. At this section is where you're just going to name your ad campaign so you can see how it's performing versus some of the other page posts or other things that you're advertising. As you start to add more and more ads, that is going to be a huge benefit to you to be able to know exactly which ad is, is which campaign. Okay, Huge as far as tracking is concerned and reporting. So 
name your ad. The next step is to set your demographics and be specific to your niche. If I'm doing an ad about VA loans, I'm not trying to target 63 to 65 plus baby boomers. If I'm doing an ad about reverse mortgages, I'm not trying to target veterans in the home. If I'm trying to target first time home buyers, I'm not going into the um, into the home demographics and select people that just bought a home or already are homeowners. I'm looking for people that are renters. Be very specific in your demographics. As you can see, my demographics, I've selected Palm Harbor, Florida, 50 mile radius. I've selected people that are age 63 and above, the maximum end. So anybody that's above 63 is going to see my ad. I've selected that they're in the baby boomer generation because those are the people that are going to benefit from a reverse mortgage right now. I've selected in their residential profile that they've been in their home for at least six plus years. Now that's just an added one because I'm looking to get people to want to refinance with a reverse mortgage that have been in their home and they're looking to fortify their retirement. You don't have to, I mean there's a lot of different demographics that you can choose from. But be specific. Look through all of them. Make sure that you're choosing the right demographic for the niche that you're advertising. Again, because I'm reverse mortgage, I've got Palm Harbor, my specific area, and a 50-mile radius. I've got 63 and older baby boomers that are in their home for over six years. And that gives me a pro – excuse me. Let me grab a quick drink of water and wet my whistle here. That gives me 78,000 people that this ad will target. It's important. I, I am not worried about getting my ad in front of a million people. I don't need a million. I want people that are specific to what I'm trying to sell. So be as specific as you can possibly be with your demographics. This is, by the way, the single most important part of when you're running a Facebook ad is getting your demographics right and play with different combinations of demographics. That's why I say naming your ad so you can see the reports and understand what's happening tracking on one ad, you know, reverse mortgage demographic baby boomers, reverse mortgage demographic six plus years in home and do different field test it against other ads that you're doing so you can see which one's converting for you best, which demographics are giving you the most amount of results. The demographics are your targets. That's how you're targeting people. Okay. The next step is to set your budget and name the ad set. Again, you're going to name the ad set just like you named the campaign. They are different. Set your budget. The minimum budget is $5 a day. Um, I do not believe that Facebook has a maximum ad budget. I have, I have yet to find where Facebook has a maximum ad budget. And I've tried everything from $5 a day on up to $100 a day and everything in between. Where I find, as you guys know, I do the daily, the quick hit every week. The most amount of impact that I find, and I do a booster, I post it as a post, and I do a boost your page post advertisement, the same thing I'm teaching you to do here. The number that I find to be the magic number for us to maximize the amount because this is just an estimated amount of daily engagement. And what I've noticed is whether I use $100 or whether I use $40, I get the exact same number of, of impressions. And then my main number that I look at is unique clicks. And people taking action, those are my big demographics. That, that, those are my tracking. Those are the things that I'm tracking. And I have noticed if I'm spending $100 a day or $40 a day, I get the exact same results. And, and anything from 40 on up, I get the same exact result as far as number of people, unique clicks, and unique um, – <clears throat> as far as reach, that's the number of total people, not impressions, which is the frequency times reach. Um, and I don't look at that. I'm not looking at impressions because frequency times reach. I want to know how many people did I reach, and of those people that I reached, how many of them clicked it, and then of the people that clicked it, how many took action. Those are my big ones. And whether I'm spending 40 bucks a day or 100 bucks a day, I get the same number. So I make mine $40 every single time. Start small. Start small so you can get a good idea of what you're going to do.
can you set budget for like $100 till the amount expires? Absolutely you can. You, you absolutely can. So when you drop down this, see where it says, uh, James, where it says per day, if I drop that down, inside that menu is where you would set it for a total dollar amount of this particular ad. You're not going to spend a penny more than, like you said, $100. And I believe you can set it as low as $20 for the total ad spent, and again, on up from there. And I have tried it that way. I think we did it one time that way for $100. And we got a good amount of impressions, but my ad was done after two days. After two days, my ad was no longer being served. It had, it had spent that $100 in clicks in that short period of time. So, but my audience may be, you know, depending on your demographics, James, and what your niche is and the size of your audience, it may be beneficial for you to be able to do it that way. So, yeah, you can do it that way as well. Um, and again, name your ad set. I leave it on page post engagement because, again, what I'm looking for is to get people to click the ad because they see the benefit and then take the action step of clicking the link so that I can have my initial conversation with them. Check to make sure that it looks the way you want in each of the ad placement areas like the news feed, the desktop. The news feed is by far the most important. That is where – Literally 90% of my traffic is coming from on Facebook ads is in the news feed, so make sure that looks good, and then place your order. That's all there is to it in creating the ad. Um, and, and yes, James is asking on this screen, can you set the specific days to run your ad and specific times? You absolutely can. So if you click on set a start and end date, you can set a start and end date. It then gives you the additional option of setting specific times. So if I want to say, James, I want this ad to run on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday every week but I only want it to run from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. on those three days. My ad will only be served on Thursday, Friday, Saturday from 5 to 10. So, you know, 15 hours of ad. So, yeah, you can be as specific as you want to be with your placement and your budget. Again, but the minimums are you've got to be a $5 a day budget um, or a $20 max ad budget. Uh, and then as far as dates and times, you can, you can have your ad run for one hour a day, one day a week for the rest of the year. You can do that. And Facebook will be more than glad to do that for you. So, yes, you can be that specific with it. Once you place your order, that's it. Now, when you place your order, you've got to know where people are going, and this is where your initial conversation comes in. Remember, this is – when they click your ad, what do they get? What, what are you saying to them when they click your ad? This is what you say or do on the page your target lands on when they click your link. Remember, the visitor is likely to not convert on this visit. So how do you get their attention? You know going in that they're not going to convert when they come to your page this time. So what do you do to get their attention to, to – Deliver your brand promise so that you can have a good initial conversation, so that they want to have another conversation. Well, in my opinion, you give them what they came for. So if my benefit was the top 10 most asked questions on uh, for reverse mortgages, when they land there, I need to give them that. And so for my example, what I would do is I would make a video, probably about 10 minutes, maybe a little less long depending on the answers to each one of those questions. And I would literally face the camera, just a little webcam or set up my cell phone and just make a recording of me asking the question, how do I qualify for a reverse mortgage? To qualify for a reverse mortgage, you've got to – and just go through the answer in as short and concise a way as possible and just answer those top ten questions in a video. That's how I would do it for my particular example. Now, if I'm doing like a first-time home buyer's kit, you know, download your first-time home buyer's kit here, and that's my, that's my ad. 
well then I'm going to put together a little kit that is maybe a page of frequently asked questions, um, then a page of here's what to be careful of, um, a page of what to do first when buying a home. What do you think I'm going to tell them to do first? Get mortgage ready. Find out what your buying power is. Won't take you very much time to put that type of thing together. Um, if it's for VA veterans, maybe I put together a list of you know specific benefits or the benefits of buying a home as a veteran, and that's you know get your get your veteran home buying cheat sheet here and create a little cheat sheet that just answers some of the basic questions. Now I know it's unlikely that they're going to watch the entire 10 minute video if I'm just asking questions and for just in case and because you should always have a call to action I'm going to provide them a number to call for more information under the video and I'll probably even say hey if you have more questions or for more information call and, and list my number out but I know they're probably not going to convert there but you do those things to make sure that they you always have that little bit of a call to action involved. Now in the three-step funnel class, we call this your cheese. Does anybody remember that when we went through that class? This part, this initial conversation is your cheese. This is what you're, you know, this is, we got the mouse trap. we're kind of trying to get them to come in so we can snap it down on. This is your cheese to get them in the mouse trap. And there has, excuse me, there has to be cheese. There has to be a reason for them to want to click the ad. And when they do click the ad, give them what they came for. Remember that if you're going to do a Facebook ad, we talk about the squeeze page. That really is the last step to the puzzle. What you're doing with your first impression is the ad. Initial conversation is where they go first. Don't worry. I promise you we are going to walk through exactly how to convert them. You will be able to convert them later. But taking this extra step by giving them that extra little bit, provide for them what they came for. Give them that cheese that you dangled out there that got them to click the ad. Just give it to them. This step goes a long, long way in building trust in your brand. And once you build trust in your brand, getting, getting them to convert is, is easy. It becomes easy to get them to convert once they believe in your brand. And so this extra step, having this cheese page, having this, this place where they land to have an initial conversation, it's going to go a long way in helping you to convert, and you will convert later. So if you're giving them a special report or a list of questions on a document, in your post, use words like download and cheat sheet or cheat list. Those words seem to convert at a much higher rate than register or sign up or get it now. So getting them to click that ad, getting them to go there, that's the first part of the conversion. And we're not even on the conversion page yet, but you're already doing things and going deep and converting your targets because you've, you've shown them with your first impression. Your first impression was a good one. You showed them that, hey, you've got something that will benefit them. You've got something that's absolutely for them, and it gave them that, that cause to click that ad. <laughs> and when they click your link, you gave them that cheese. You had a good initial conversation with them. You provided them that thing that you said that you were going to provide them with, and that goes a long way in, in demonstrating, first and foremost, your expertise and building trust in your brand. And so now we're going to start to talk about how do we convert them. This, is, this initial conversion is what will determine if your target gives you a second or a third opportunity. So take the time to get this part of your conversion page right. You really need to make sure that that initial conversation is a good conversation that builds trust and delivers your brand promise and gives them what they're looking for. And this can help you lead those targets down the path like we were talking about. Now the next step is the follow-up. And 
the follow-up step is the actual conversion. That's where you actually get them. The follow-up portion of this three-step process, the, the first impression, they click the ad, having that initial conversation, great stuff. Now the follow-up is where you're going to convert them. And, and I started to put it together for today's class, but realistically, we need to spend an entire day on this piece. So we're going to focus on how to make sure this step is done correctly and use some really cool ninja tactics to do it and save money on your overall Facebook ads. Now, the initial ad is going to create the clicks, but what we're going to talk about for the conversion or the follow-up step is going to create multiple clicks, and this little ninja tactic is going to help you convert or get people to do this conversion step far greater than just having a single page where they click the ad, they get to the page. You may get a few of them, but this is going to really improve. Excuse me, I was sneezing there. This is really going to improve your conversions. It will... It is a little bit technical, and we've kind of gone over it a little bit before, but, but very few actually implemented it when we went over it, so we're going to dive back into it because if you're looking to do Consumer Direct and three-step funnels and, and convert leads on Facebook, you've got to know how to do this follow-up piece with the little added technical step. So make sure you got your notepad and you got your computer ready to go because we're going to dive in and, and do it together. And I, I get it, James. Hey, man, most of it, most of us on the call have not set up our website custom audience, and that's what we're going to really dive into deep. So for today's class, I know it was a little bit shorter presentation, but again, I feel like we really need to spend the entire day tomorrow on talking about this last step because it does get a little technical, and it's important that you do take this last step. So... That's that's today's stuff. Now, what questions do we have? Indeed. Um, one thing that we didn't cover today is where where are we creating this initial landing page, the, the, you know, the initial conversation page and the conversion page? And that's something that you've got to be thinking about. Now, if you don't, how many on this call? Okay, so let's just ask the question. How many pe is there anybody on this call that does not have their own website for their mortgage business? All right, so that's a dead silence. So everybody has their own that has a website for their mortgage business. Here's the next question. Do you have access to being able to create pages for that website? Do you have access to being able to create pages for that website is the very basic question. Yes, yes, okay. Got a couple of yeses. That is imperative. If you're going to do this on your own, you absolutely have to be able to have access to be able to create these things on, on a domain that you can that you can access. So and, and you can do it that way too. That's the same thing, James. So James is saying yes, but I'd like to set up separate Weebly website for only reverse mortgages. You, that's absolutely the same thing. That's your own website, and you have access to building these pages. That's more than fine. You can certainly do that. There is no problem with doing that, and, and that's what I was getting at is where are you going to build these things, and Weebly makes it pretty simple to be able to do because Weebly such – it's free. It's versatile. Look, guys, you're not trying to create – nobody's looking to you to be a computer programmer. What you need to have access to is a place where you can take – and put your information, you know, that initial page where they're going to land. Like I said, all I'm going to have there for my reverse mortgage people, oh crap, that's a real site. So 
So all I really want to have is I want to have on that very first page. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to pages. And I'm going to say, that's my home page. Um, that's my about page. Let's move that up there. And I'm going to rename about reverse mortgage myth buster. Or let's say I want to do a whole brand new one for my reverse mortgage myth buster page. Let's do that. Let's go to my sites. And I'm going to add a site. And it's just going to be a site. And let's see, I want some basic, basic, basic. No frills kind of stuff. Um, basic, basic, basic. No frills, no frills. I don't like the wood grainy ones. Well, let's go with this one. I like this one. Let's choose that. And use the subdomain is going to be reverse. Mortgage Myth Buster. It's available. I'm approved. Continue. Awesome sauce. So now I can click to add title is Reverse Mortgage Myth Buster. Getting to the truth was never so easy. Button text. I don't want a button here. Um, let's see. That's where my elements go. So let's edit image. Let's go with, no, I don't want to edit my image. I want to, let's see here. Where is button text? Well, maybe I don't like this thing. Let's go with no header. And my elements. I'm going to add in an embed code element. And that is all. And I'm going to add in a title element underneath that. My title element, I'm going to say for more information, please feel free. Free to call me at and let's go ahead and center that baby up. Let's go ahead and choose a better color. Let's see. I'm gonna go with some gold. Big fan of the gold. Boom. I like it. Oops, probably ought to highlight what I want to change the color to.
boom, there we go. So I got that in there. Now I just need to embed my video. So I just come over to YouTube and I grab up my YouTube code. So I'm going to come into my Creator Studio. Creator Studio. I'm going to go to my video monitor. I'm going to go watch my video. I'm going to go share, embed, copy. Bring that back over there. There we go. Paste that in there. REL equals zero. Ampersand auto play equals one. I'm good with all that. I want to center that baby up. Now I've got my video in there and I'm literally done creating my page. That that's it. That's where I want people to land. Now I would probably come into here into pages and I would probably go to about and oh it doesn't let you turn off a page what about remove a page yep there we go yes delete that page Yes, delete that page, and now that's all they're going to get. Now, I would probably add my squeeze page. Standard page is going to be get more information later on down the line, and that's where I'll create my squeeze page with the, with the added tools that we're going to use. Where does Facebook fat, Facebook advertising fit in the overall marketing picture? In other words, what should be already done in my marketing before I try Facebook marketing? Um, Jim, if you're, it depends on what you're looking to do. If you're looking to do consumer direct ads, then then the only things that need to be done in your marketing before you do Facebook marketing is get your get your funnel your three step funnel set up make sure that you've got you know your follow up plan and process in place exactly what you're going to do to convert them and what your cheese is and then go through this this conversion page process of of setting up making sure your ad is something that's going to entice them to want to click and then make sure you're having a good initial conversation with them and giving them what it is that they came for and then follow through with tomorrow in the follow up part but having stuff done before you get started with Facebook ads know exactly what you're going to do your ads on Jim in other words have your cheese ready to go what are you going to what are you going to advertise about are you going to market to first-time home buyers? Are you going to market to reverse mortgage people? And don't sit there and come up with, well, I want to market to VA loans, first-time home buyers, and reverse mortgage people all at the same time. No, you can't dive into it that way. You've got to get started first and understand the process and how it works before you can, you know, that's kind of that's the the big race when right now we got to practice getting around the track. So first things first. Know what you what what are you going to advertise? Who's your first niche going to be? What is your cheese going to be? And have that cheese ready to go. Your ten frequently asked questions, your first time home buyer kit, whatever it is, have the cheese ready to go. And then, as you can see, have a Weebly page, have a page that's ready to go, so that you can do an advertisement to those pa that page that gives that cheese away, that just literally gives that cheese away. Now what we're going to talk about tomorrow is the backup conversion page and how do we get people to that conversion page and we're going to use a little trick that is by far the most hottest thing going in marketing on the internet today and that's retargeting. 
And so we're going to have basically two ads going at the same time, one that's getting people to it, one that's retargeting getting people to convert. And the specificity, specifics of both of those things, but the things you need in place first is know what your cheese is and what you're going to advertise and have that page set up. Have that squeeze page ready to go so that when it does start to work, you can, that other thing is just firing on all cylinders. And then have your follow-up plan in place for once you do convert a lead, you've now got a way or you've got a process in place to turn them into a buying customer. You're going to call them on the phone. You're going to send them a, a card, and you're going to add, you know, Facebook friend them, whatever, all those different things that you're going to do. How do you get rid of the button text listed there? James, that's a really good question, and I was not able to figure that out while I was just kind of playing with it. So what I would probably do is I would go back to design, and I would change my theme up because it's got that button in the middle there, and I don't like it. So I'm going to change my theme to go with something a little bit less – a little bit less obtrusive. See, these got all the learn more. These have the buttons built in. So I'm going to go with something a little bit plainer, Janer. No, thank you. I don't want to buy. So basically all I did was change the theme. I just changed the theme up a little bit, give it a little bit more something of a background here, and, and that's all I did. That is literally all I did. So if it's something you can't – just change the theme up or, or – you know, I noticed that button was in the middle there too, and so I just – it wasn't a benefit to me. So I went ahead and just changed up the theme. All right, boys and girls, that is it for today. Again, tomorrow we are going to go deep into the actual conversion page itself. And the conversion page, there's not a whole lot of bells and whistles to that. It's a simple form. But what you do to get people to that page that has the form on it, what you do like we showed you today, what you do beforehand, that's where the conversion comes in. And we're going to go deep into that tomorrow and exactly how to utilize – Facebook retargeting to get people to your site multiple, multiple times to get that to be a win. Sound good, guys, girls? Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, I know that uh, I hope that you get a benefit out of these classes each and every day, and I'm here to provide you with as much value as we can on an ongoing basis. We'll see you right back here, same time, same channel tomorrow. Have a fantastic rest of your day, everybody, and we'll see you on the flip side. Bye now.